Me trial and will be presented by Dr. Patel Manesh. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's my pleasure to present the results of the CRISP AMI study. Most importantly, for the study investigators, my fellow steering committee members, and the patients that agreed to participate in this acute AMI study. As many of you know, we've had significant improvements in the care of our patients with ST elevation MI, and despite these improvements, these patients still have a significant morbidity and mortality at six months, which approaches 10% in some registries. Intraortic balloon counterpulsation, as you know, is the most common device used for patients with cardiogenic shock and unloads the ventricle, increases diastolic pressure, and may improve coronary perfusion pressure. In animal studies, it's been shown to reduce infarct size when placed prior to reperfusion. Therefore, the primary objective of the CRISP-AMI study was to determine if routine use of intraaortic balloon counterpulsation prior to mechanical reperfusion in patients with anterior ST elevation MI without shock compared to standard of care PCI reduced infarct size. And to do that, as you can see on this slide, we enrolled patients with anterior ST elevation MI and at least two millimeters of ST elevation in two contiguous leads or four millimeters across the precordium with a planned PCI within six hours. They were randomized into one of two strata, the standard of care PCI where they received routine PCI with medical therapy versus intraortic balloon counterpulsation placed prior to reperfusion and continued at least 12 hours post with the primary endpoint being cardiac MRI performed on day three to five for infarct size. The infarct size was measured in one of two primary endpoint populations, all patients with the data of cardiac MRI and those with a proximal occlusion or TIMI-01 flow, the presumed largest infarcts. All patients were followed for six months for clinical events. This is the study flow of how the patients were randomized. So 337 patients were randomized, uh, 176 into the standard of care PCI group, and 161 into the intraortic balloon counterpulsation group. First, let me say that the PCI was performed fairly expertly at our sites, with over 97% of the patients getting an intervention to the IRA, which was most commonly the LAD. It is important to realize that in the intraortic balloon counterpulsation group, eight patients, often due to anatomy, did not get the counterpulsation device. Also, it's important to realize in the study that 15 patients with standard of care PCI did cross over to getting the counterpulsation device, most commonly because they developed sustained hypotension and cardiogenic shock. We then followed all of our patients with cardiac MRI and clinical endpoints. One patient in each group was lost to follow-up. As anticipated, there are patients that unfortunately die or are unstable or unable to get into the MRI, and there were some patients that did not have MRI performed. As you can see at the end of the slide here, we have 80% of the patients in both groups getting an MRI, and then we have over 97% or so of follow-up in both patients. Here is the primary endpoint finding. Infarct size as a measure of the left ventricle percentage was 42% in the patients with intraortic balloon counterpulsation and 37.5% in standard of care PCI. This was not statistically significant. In the patient population with the proximal LED occlusion and TIMI zero flow, again, larger infarcts, but again, not different between the two groups. This slide shows the clinical events at six months. You'll see that the all-cause mortality rate in the counterpulsation group is 1.9%. And in the standard of care PCI group, it's 5.2%. This is also not statistically significant. We did look at an exploratory endpoint of death, shock, or new heart failure at six months. 5% of the patients in the intraortic balloon counterpulsation, 12% of the patients with standard of care PCI. These findings led us to conclude the following. First, in patients with acute anterior ST elevation MI without cardiogenic shock, there was not a difference and infarct size between the groups getting routine IBC versus standard of care PCI. Death at six months was low and similar between the two groups, and it's notable that the exploratory endpoint of death, new onset heart failure, and shock was reduced with intraortic balloon counterpulsation. We believe these findings have sort of three lessons for our practice. First is that I think they, uh, with our group, we believe that they underscore current guideline recommendations for rapid reperfusion and routine counterpulsation prior to reperfusion does not reduce infarct size. However, we think investigators and clinicians should be vigilant 
at identifying patients that deteriorated during the angioplasty as 15 percent, uh, as 15 patients or 8.5 percent crossed over to counterpulsation in this study. And then finally, we think in the setting of acute MI, uh, studies are possible to do, and it is, also, it is possible to evaluate uh, the technology in ST elevation MI. The time to treatment in this study was 71 minutes, door to balloon time in and the entire group, 77 minutes for balloon pump and 68 minutes for the patients getting standard of care PCI, so nine minutes difference between the two groups. For those of you seeking further information, this trial is published in the Journal of the American College of, uh, I'm sorry, the Journal of the American Medical Association today, Chairman. Thank you. Questions? Yes. Um, can you comment on the power of the trial to detect um, significant differences cl in a clinical point? Because it seems like those numbers, there were enough there to suggest that if you'd had more patients, it, it might have been statistically significant and, and that these would be clinically significant differences. The findings are tantalizing when you look at the clinical endpoints. As you state, the sample size was aimed at looking for a reduction in infarct size. We looked at prior studies looking at left ventricular infarct size reduction. The study was powered to re identify a 25 percent reduction in myocardial infarct size. It wasn't powered for clinical endpoints, as you state. Hi, I'm Melissa Walton, storywiththeheart.org. Did you look at bleeding and transfusion rates that might have offset any potential hope for gain there with the yeah. IPB? Uh, thank you for the good question. Uh, they'll be in the formal slides, and we did look at vascular complications and major bleeding at 30 days and six months. It was 4.3 percent in the intraortic balloon counterpulsation group and 1.1 percent in standard of care PCI. This wasn't statistically significant, although by numerically a little bit higher in the counterpulsation group. Fairly safe and rapid balloon counterpulsation placed in both groups, in the, in the experimental group. Please. Steve Stiles, theheart.org. Um, could you sort of put this in context with uh, other studies that have been done um, in the same clinical setting and what you think the, the, the impact on, on practice should be and whether there are any changes in store, um, variation around the world and what practices are in this regard? Yeah, thanks. Um, so counterpulsation has been around for a while, as you're aware, and used since 60s and 70s. And um, early studies with counterpulsation prior to angioplasty without stenting showed a clear improvement in those patients likely due to vessel patency. And there have been studies, as you know, that show in, in patients with cardiogenic shock, there's uh, observational information studies showing improvement in those patients. It is continued uh, interest in many interventionalists on how high-risk PCI patients and other acute MI patients may benefit from counterpulsation, and, and that, I think, is part of why CRISP AMI look to treat these higher-risk patients that are teetering on the edge. And I think the study reinforces our current guidelines and says that you should open up the artery as fast as possible, but be aware of those patients that deteriorate because they may require uh, additional support. Regarding international variation, that's present in a lot of things, and I don't know if I should really comment on the drivers of that. Uh, the evidence here is the best I can present you. Yeah, I'm wondering if uh, the other gentleman here would like to comment on, on the European perspective of these findings. Can you, can you say it again, which is the problem? The, because the perspective from Europe on, on these findings, what's the current practice in Europe regarding the use of IABP in, in high-risk MI, and uh, whether these would have any influence on that? In all honesty, uh, we do not have, at the moment, European data. We are just going to launch a registries on uh, how people are dealing with myocardial infarction, but at the moment, to my knowledge, we do not have uh, clear European data. You have to consider that the European Society of Cardiology is a federation of 53 different countries coming from a, a very different background level and so on. We do have a lot of our countries where probably a counterpulsation is not even available. And therefore, that is what we are trying now to find out. The registry will be launched at the end of this year, and we started in 2012. So I cannot really provide any clear European data. I should say, and just out of interest, that this trial was an international study conducted at uh, 30 sites uh, in nine countries, including a few of the European countries. So it is an international study. And there was equipoise amongst all those centers to randomize patients into the study. 
Okay, thank you. There are other questions?